Or slash water Ryu, mm -hmm. obviously locking in a 24 speed lead. So we'll see what kind of route that Madrini is going to be taking. Potentially a turn one play style. Yeah, and I love the Nikki play because she gives you both opportunities, right? She can be a turn one comp. Turn two is a unit that deals a lot of damage, attack buffs. She has the heal and the cleanse. But right now, Madrini says, I am not worried about your Nikki because I will reset her cooldowns and I will remove that will on turn one. Yeah, so uh, this is a very popular play, very predictable play in my eyes right now. So with the more and the uh, Chung Pung getting locked in here. But we have a 33 speed lead in the form of Vanessa being drafted right now. So Zepha is ready to speed mm -hmm. contest. And a buffed Hay Gang. We've seen how much more this Hay Gang has appeared after its buff. And it's great against these two units because they do strip, but they don't reduce or increase attack bar. So you're going to get cut anyway. So right now he's saying you either ban my Hay Gang or you bring something else that can help you deal with it. Now, let's see what happens here. Majim is going to be responding right here as we get this countdown pretty low here. And we got a Juno in that dark. Dumon's going to hit the field. Yeah, very strong unit into this draft still. There is some sustain, but we know once she hits you with a curse of death, that's going to be really difficult to shake off. Zephyr quickly with a Rakuni and a Camilla. I actually really like the Camilla against this whole comp. The question is that he doesn't have the last pick. So I think right now what Madrimdi can do is just ban that Haygang go for turn one and bring something else that rounds out very well this draft, either a secondary speed lead or something that brings in some threat of killing this strong water and fire units. Yeah, let's see what this last pick's going to be, because I think what this says right now is Zephyr's very comfortable banning out that Doom on that Dako mm -hmm. I think that's going to be banned out here. I do love that uh, Dako Mimuji being drafted by Madrim because that's a lot of firepower synergizing with the team that he just brought as well. Yeah, we're talking about it's either speed lead or something that can kill something quickly, and that's definitely a monster that if it hits with skill two, then gets a proc or, you know, lands a death break, it's going to be a unit that is gone from the field. Bands coming in. Oh. The speed lead is removed, and then the Hay Gang, like we called out, we could see that from a mile away. The question is, does that tell you that Zepha believes in his speed and he can try to kill something right away? We'll see. I think a lot of it's depending on this Nikki. What kind of damage coming out here? We've got a swift Vanessa. Look at this <laughs> break trying to set a unit up here. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, misses the strip and no death break. He's thinking right now, looks at the game, trying to give the turn back or just keeping it for later. Now the Nikki goes with big damage. The attack buff is going to come on and I think it's going to be really difficult to remove something from the field. And there's going to be a big opening for both this Chunk Punk and then the Dark Unmute, uh, un, Unimuji. Yeah, so that's really great damage there coming towards that Dark Onimusha. Dark Onimusha is looking super low right now. Juno looking to get some Despair Stones out onto the field. Doesn't receive anything, not even stripping either. Oh, doesn't, but the Chung Punk comes in. There's a couple death breaks and the damage is oh, huge! My Lord. Gets the proc to remove someone from the field, but remember, there is the Vanessa. I don't think she got reset. Goes for the Camilla. And she comes back. There we go. So the Vanessa was not reset in that case there. So Camilla does come back, attack buff as well. But look how healthy our Dokuti Mush is looking right now. Mm -hmm. This is going to be really interesting. He opts to put it on the Nikki. Very interesting because the Rakuni right now can try to give a turn to itself so he can heal or he can go for the riskier move, which is trying to land the death break. Goes for the death break. One monster off the field. The Camilla! Look at that damage! Insane damage coming out of the Camilla with the defense break sitting on top of the Dark Unimusha. Dark Unimusha gets drops there. So a little bit of attention here from Adreemdy going towards this Vanessa trying to move this unit from the field here. I think he's going to be staying pretty consistent trying to keep that Vanessa down because we got Camilla really, really low right now as well. Yeah. Yeah, the Camilla looks on the high damage, low tankiness side, so he noticed that. Madrimdi is, I'm gonna go for her, remove it from the field before the Vanessa gets the skill back for reviving. And this Raccoon is gonna be super key with procs oh, and oh, gets wow. an important proc. Do right now, the Vanessa trying to land some damage on the Doomon. Can the Camilla proc? No, she doesn't get it. Yeah, Zephyr's really gotta get rid of this <gasps> Doomon. This Doomon's super Ooh. dangerous right now. Defense breaks lane across the field as well. Not at all what Zephyr wanted to see. Raccoon, he's got a lot of work ahead to try and cleanse all of that. Yeah, that is a lot of damage, my friend. The Death Break's coming in. The Juno removes the Vanessa. Now it's a 2v3. You don't have the opportunity to revive, but the Clans from the Rakuni gives an opening. You can try to freeze this monster, oh, but she wow. resists. Definitely a max resistant Doomon as well. All the attack bar the manipulations coming out there. We're keeping that Camilla back as much as possible, but Doomon is the unit that Zephyr really has to get mm -hmm. rid of. Landing right now the Curse of Death, 
can mean that the game's over, and she does. Puts it on four turns. The clock is ticking for this Camilla to be removed from the field, and even the Juno is dealing so much damage on a water unit. Yeah, that's got to be the... Oh, he needed to get that kill. If he got that kill there, we'd be able to try and bounce back here, but that's not what's happening. Zeph is definitely in a lot of trouble there. He's trying to keep that Rakuni down as low as possible so to stop the healing going to um, Camilla. Yeah, I don't know. I think right now, looking at it, the... Chung Pung was a, such a key unit. The Death Breaks coming in, and he landed a lot of them. So he got a couple of very important procs and was kind of the monster that allowed others to deal damage and finish with my Dream D taking game number one. One point on the board for Madream D. You're right, you called it out. The Chung Pung was a very key unit MVP of the game. I have to say, though, I was very impressed with the damage on the Camilla from Zephyr's side there, Seppi. Yeah, she was hitting very, very hard. And like Stoic said, if she managed to get a couple procs and remove from the field that Duman, it could have been a different game. But she was very tanky, and she was definitely 100% res. Yeah, once that Mark of Death came out there on top of the Camilla, that was game over. There's no way that you're able to uh, heal yourself through that Mark of Death. It's it. You're marked for death. And that Camilla dropped there and that ended that match right there. Oh, look at this change in pace. A surprising... Vanessa Preben, we talked about how players adapt and realize that other monsters become more important in this matchup. And he saw that this Vanessa was specifically prepared for him. He can take away the 33 speed lead and says, now you don't have a way to contest this. Yep, and right away, Madrim, he's going to drop in his own 33 speed lead, taking that Oliver, locks that in here. Zepha with the Jemire and the Shizuka, great little combination there. Mm -hmm. I really like this response, and I know that a lot of people pick, pick them without the Tablo, but you know, it is Saturday. I would love to see a Tablo on the field, the Laura coming out, so a speed lead with 120 base speed monster, and now Madrim is thinking, do I bring, yes, a lot of variety with another speed lead and another very fast monster that got banned? on the first match. Nope, double speed lead coming up from a Dream D. He has said he really wants that turn one. He's going to be playing that turn one style here. I think Zeph is potentially thinking about Ooh. backing it up here. And not, I don't think that necessarily Ooh. says he's backing it up here because we got a Gianna and we have a Dark Monkey King hitting the field. The Dark Monkey King is such a high base speed monster as well, so it might be on Swift if he closes out with a secondary speed lead. He has the opportunity to fight for turn one and now the Hay Gang. I really think the Hay Gang is super strong in this matchup and you might need to ban that but then it tells you that the lore is probably going to take turn one yep exactly let's see what happens here with madrim he does have that hagging he is going to be bringing the very fast ethna we know this unit for taking turn one here we know that the base speed is like on that ethna and zepha needs to wrap up his draft here with something extremely impactful because right now madrim is looking for that control immediately mm -hmm. yeah very very strong comp there's one interesting thing though if you remove the ethna there is no death break on that team the question is is his comp tanky enough to withstand the damage? He brings a very tanky unit in the Fire and Bison. Uh, so now it's very difficult. He tells you, I want to play turn two and bends the end. I like that, you know? It, it didn't surprise me. Yeah, definitely agree with that. 33 speed lead coming out from a Dream D. HP lead coming out for Zepha as well. Zepha looking to hopefully stay alive with this assault that Madrimi is going to place on. Yeah, let's go. Turn one out of the water. Ryu gets the removal. Let's see how much damage this Laura can put in. And then the question is, can this Oliver land everything? Oh wow. my God, triple stun. The Hagen, can he get the four stun? Or will the Shizuka bring oh, the game back? He gets God, it. No Here we go. You can always rely on Hagen to get the yeah. spear stun out there. And of course, Oliver is going to be super oppressive right now. Lots of attack bar pushback. We're going to see additional turns popping out to push back even more attack bar. New additional turns coming out for Zeppa oh, okay. as well. So definitely Zeppa being placed on the back foot early, getting a proc, not able to do too much here with this counter. But he can try to control the lore. Yes, sir. The thing was very well played by Madrim D resetting the the Cardinal and not another unit. He knew that the brand from that unit was the most impactful. So very well played and carefully. Yeah, most definitely. So you're going to be seeing this big third skill coming out here. Zephyr really needs to see some additional turn and defense breaks, to be honest with you. Yeah. And only one's going to be landing there in that water reel. No control, no stuns right now. The damage is coming out, and now the glancing is so powerful, but he goes for it anyways, and nothing lands. Just one miserable slow on the Laura. The damage is coming out. This unit is so oppressive, and the thing is, even if the Gianna had the strip, the Hagangal's on the other side. You're just going to give him a cleanse for free.
Yeah, that's a really, really tough situation for Zephyr to be in right now. He's trying all that he can to bounce back here. But I do think Madrimdi has the much cleaner draft going into this round here. Mm. And he's looking very, very safe where he is right now, putting Zephyr absolutely on the back foot. Okay. Yeah, I really like his draft. Very strong. In the turn two, everything landed on Cardinal's shoulder, so he had to get everything right, or the Shizuka had to 100% resist everything, which is something so hard to do. Very dominant performance on Madream D, taking the 2-0 lead. Madream D all of a sudden sitting at match point with a great showcase of crowd control there, Seppi. Yeah, excellent draft. Very good balance between having enough speed to take turn one, but also counterpicking your opponent. Because when he saw that his opponent Zepha was trying to go for turn one, he brought out that hay gang that just kills Gianna. Right, Stoic? Yep, exactly. Well, you can see the pre-bans from last time. Vanessa and Nikki, they will be available as we get into this round. Number three, match point for a dream. Be a potential, another 3-0. I don't want to say it. Not going to be a caster's curse over here, but a potential. <laughs> it's there. We've got pre-bans coming out right now. It could be anything at this point. Yeah, let's see what happens. They have to swap it out. They're going to go back to the match one pre-bans, or will they adapt to something that they saw right here? Has Zepha prepared a different draft? to go against Madrim D. Maybe something, you know, up his sleeve in case he was backed up against the wall like he is right now. Yeah, we need, probably gonna see a little bit of a switch here. And we're gonna see a Gianna getting pre-banned, a Laura getting pre-banned here, Zephyr with the first pick. I, I, I don't know what he has to take. Does he have to take something away from a Dream Deer? Is he also gonna be locking in that Oliver? Yeah, I would steal away that Oliver. It's just such an oppressive unit. And if you choose turn two, you would have to go with something like more heavy fire, you know, a Juno, a fire monkey. And we haven't seen those from him yet. So I think he prefers to steal it away. Yep, I think that's definitely the right decision here. Let's we'll see what Madreamdy is going to be doing. Is he still going to be speed contesting Oliver? Uh, I'm sorry, what are you, Chung Punk, potentially coming out here from Madreamdy? Yeah, I really like the Etna pick because it was almost a surefire must ban, you know? So right now he's thinking about it. Do I change my style a little bit? Uh, the Chung Punk would be a very safe choice. He can also bring a Juno. I really yep. love that. Juno yep. very strong. We mentioned against an Oliver, Juno, Fire Monkey, those units become super important. Yep, most definitely. Let's see what Zeph is going to be drafting here. He's got to know that potentially that Dumon might hit the field once again. He also has to keep in mind of that Dakoni Musha. We know how oppressive that unit can be. Both those Dak units are very, very oppressive. Can I say something crazy? If we see from a Dream Deer right now, no reset coming out in the next two monsters, this opens the door for something like an Abelio to interrupt the Dark Animusha. So I'm going to be super interested to see what those two picks are because if he brings the Chunk Bung right now, he, he can be in trouble because you can pick a lot of fire units in the end right there and be very tanky. The Masha is super dangerous right here. Uh, we know that Masha ignores water units and just crits on their face. Yep, most definitely. I mean, there's that Dumon already being mm -hmm. drafted by Madreem. That might get locked in right here. And of course, with the Pry, I think a Pry is an excellent pick right there. Excellent monster, another source of trip, and also has the speed buff, the heal. You know, uh, the question right now is there's no reset. So there's a lot of units that come to mind for me right now, even though the prize is strong. He has a little bit less kill potential, and he doesn't have cooldown reset. Now, Zepha can go with, oh, turn one unit, the Etna, strip, stun, death break. Very, very strong unit and close it out with another speed lead or the Raccoon. He got the Holy Trinity finally for the first time today. Yeah, so he had played the Holy Trinity before in the prelim. So it looks like he's going to be bringing it back right here. Oliver Miles Raccoon, for those who don't know about that Holy Trinity, is those three units. Madrimdi with this last pick. I, I, it could be that Dakoni Musha. I don't think the Dakoni Musha is too bad right now, but I would like to see more defense breaks if he was going to be bringing that Dakoni Musha to the field. Yeah, and can I say something else? There's only two single target strip units on that side. A Wusa or a Shizuka would not be bad right here and banning the Etna, but he does bring the Nikki. Nikki on both sides, very interesting. Uh, does it still look like an Etna ban for you, or do you think that there's another unit that's very strong? I mean, I think Etna is really, really good to ban out here. I feel like Masha is always like a mm -hmm. really, really big threat as well. So you know what? I would actually say um, that, that Ethna is probably it. Because that Ethna is going to set the tone there for Zephyr, and I do think that's something the that Madrini is probably going to have to ban out. Yeah, picking two water units into it, it's very dangerous, but he removes the other win unit and says, I am going to take turn one, and with a Nikki, I can maybe kill something. So I like that more aggressive playstyle, but I also like Zephyr's ban 
Not gonna deal with that Doomon. Let's not die to that monster. Turn one, going to Madream D. He comes in, strips, misses on the Etna. Can this Etna? No, but she gets stunned. Yeah, it misses on the Etna, but it's the perfect disparison to get on top of that unit right there. And you can clearly see Madream D really wants to get rid of that Masha. It's gonna be a ton of additional damage with the heal blocks landing on top of the field <gasps> as well. Masha does stay alive though. One HP. Available, and he's gonna try and pump a unit here. I think he should probably go for that Nikki. I think the Nikki's a unit that he's gotta get rid of, but he goes right after that Juno. We do have the second skill available. He's gonna try and pump that Juno in. I love this option, and now he has a Raccoonie oh. that can give a turn back, and he can be, be, even be to the Masha to remove the Juno once and for all. He gives it to uh -huh. the Edna. He can go AOE, or he can go for the stun. I think there's two options, and there's a greedy one. He goes for the greedier one, because okay. if this Braha procs, you will cry, she doesn't. Okay. <laughs> there's that Juno is gonna be dropping right there. No additional turns gonna be coming out of that Masha. Of course, we're gonna be healing up with getting additional turn from this Nikki as well. Nikki's gonna be looking to get a big sleep, no, oh, sleep potentially, on top of the miles. It is going to be the unit that's going to be going next here, but it looks like he's really, really focused at trying to get that dismount on top of the Masha. My man, this Masha does not want to fall. She stuck to one HP a couple times. Can the Rakuni proc? No! She will finally okay. probably leave the field right now and fall off the chair. That's what she does. Can she get a proc to try to remove this, Nikki? Skill one into skill two is very powerful damage. Gets it? Ooh. No proc! No additional, dam uh, no additional turns going to be coming out there, but what we're seeing right now is a lot of attention obviously coming towards that Rakuni and that Miles as well. You want to keep both these units really, really low to stop all that. Holy, holy oh. additional damage coming out of that more as well. It's absolutely insane. Masha is going to need some saving grace right now. No additional turns oh, again coming out for Zephyr. I got to tell something. This Nick is too tanky, my friend. I think, I think this is a very high attack, HP, and defense. Wow. Nicky taking the home for Madrim D to win. A dominant showing from the Rune King with our second 3-0 of the day. Madreamdi taking it to go, saying that he's willing to do whatever it takes to move forward there, Stoic. Yeah, who would have thought double 3-0 well, just guys, like that in today's tournament? Let's give it up for Zephyr and Madreamdi. I mean, I stated earlier that, uh, you know, the some of the fastest violent despair sets in the world, and you got to see it moving at speeds like Swift and you still see a stun. So obviously those sets were on despair. That was fantastic. Madreem D, congratulations. Moving on to the next round. How did you feel going into the match? Nervous. <laughs> the translation is nervous. <laughs> and how do you feel going into the next round to fight uh, True Will? <laughs> 